Hello people of YouTube. I'm back again with another Metal Earth Star Wars kit and this time I'm going to tackle Kalo Ren's Command Shuttle. And this is something new. This is not anything we've seen before the newest movie. Although it is a little bit similar to the other shuttles. But this is a new kit. More fun. Let's open this up and see what it contains. Kylo Ren's command shuttle. We have the usual two sheets and what I believe is just one sheet of instructions. So hopefully that's a sign this will be easier. I have the one sheet with the usual top half of picture of the model a bit about bins and folds and tabs, um, a suggestion of needle nose pliers, which are handy, very useful. And then you have your your um, key, if you will. The blue circles mean that you bend the tabs over once you get them through the slots. The triangles mean that you twist the tabs once you get them through the slots. And a little bit of an illustration. And then down at the bottom, you have a layout of the two sheets so that you can find the parts. And to open it up, we lift up the front page, flip out the bottom, because that brings you to page two, which is where the assembly starts. And you essentially just go in number of parts throughout the majority of the, of the uh, kit, and then flip it over for the last two pages. One thing that they're now doing with the newer kits, they started doing it a while ago, but originally they didn't put any color into this um, metal sheet area. What they're doing is they're coloring certain parts because those parts are the same. And what happens is you use them in several different places. Like this is probably a couple of thrusters. They're exactly the same. So they just give a number for one part and you just find the other. The old directions, they didn't color anything. So you got a number for the first part and you had to hunt for the second one. Not that big a deal, except for when you get two similar parts. Like for instance, here and here. Don't know if it will come through, but these two parts are very, very similar. Matter of fact, they look the same. This might be a spare, but there have been kits where there are a lot of very similar parts and only one was numbered and you couldn't quite tell where the other parts were or it was very difficult. Then putting these colors out there for the like parts helps tremendously. Now tools that I use for these kits, we have the Fascinations tool kit with the clippers, flat nose pliers and needle nose pliers. The clippers are great for getting parts off. These two pliers are great for shaping, reaching into places, doing the things you need to do. I also have a pair of tweezers that I've used since the beginning. They still come in handy, especially for twisting tabs. Some other tools that I like to use, I have some a Kelly clamps or locking clamps. They're basically needle nose pliers. They do have a bit of a ridge on them. Makes them grip better, but can also damage the kit. But I use them a lot for reaching into twist tabs or holding on to parts because they lock so that I can line them up, the little tiny parts that are just too small for my hand. And this is a smaller pair for getting into even tinier areas. I also have a pair of round nose pliers, which come in really handy for shaping curved and circular parts. It's tricky, but it's better than trying to do it by hand. I also like to have some sort of knife or blade available, not necessarily sharpness, but something thin that I can wedge in. There's sometimes you get tabs that are real close to another part. You can't get the tweezers in there so I'll slide the knife in there and kind of work it over and either bend it or move it out enough that I can twist it. And then I have a dental style pick that I use sometimes for reaching in. Sometimes the tabs need to be pulled back out to line up and rather than taking the part apart or off doing it my finger I can just reach in there and pull it things pop into place, or vice versa. I also like to have an assortment of dowel rods on hand of different sizes, which also come in really handy for 
curving and shaping parts. One of them is sharpened like a pencil and that's great for slowly forming curved coned parts, cone shapes. I've also grabbed a couple of um, step mandrels that can be used for the same for, for smoothing and shaping parts, curving parts. These are more solid than the wood and a bit heavier. So it's kind of a toss up between preferences. Sometimes the dowel rods come in handier because they're longer and these only go so far. I also have a paintbrush that I sometimes use because it's tapered. Just any tool that you can get. Um, I've heard people using drill bits, which if it's a part is small enough, I will probably do the same. Maybe a marble for parts that are round, a cone. Just anything you can use, any solid object you can use to help shape these parts. So enough talk, now to get started. We start off with simple 90 degree bends. Once you bend down the sides of part 4, there are flaps on the back of either side that fold in slightly and tabs that go into slots. The instructions say to bend these tabs 90 degrees. I twisted them a little way to hold them into place and then came back later after more of the kit was assembled and there was more support to untwist the tabs and bend them over. I used the sharpened dowel rod for most of the shaping of the thrusters. Try bending the tabs up before curving the parts. It will help you to get the tabs into the slots. After more tabs were connected and secured, I shaped it up a little bit more with the round nose pliers and long nose pliers. The instructions to me were not clear on this back part and how to fold it. I had to go online and look at the 3D picture to sort it all out. Also, because of the tabs that are twisted right in the folds, bending the ends over takes a little extra pressure. Remember to bend all of the tabs facing the same direction towards the next part. The center tab on this stand is bent over. If you straighten it, the part will fit together much easier. Some of the bends in this kit do not have the usual fold lines that I have become accustomed to. I did not bend the bottoms of part 4 earlier so that I would have room to twist tabs. Now is a good time.
Now that I have more supporting parts on, I went back and untwisted the tabs from earlier on part 4 and then folded them over. I did not try to immediately bend over the end tabs on part 16 or 17. I waited until I had fastened them to the next part, then bent over the tabs. There were a lot of tabs holding the bottom and top halves together. I missed a few on the first pass. I used my knife to bend two of the tabs up. There was not enough room to twist them. I had to bend one of the bottom twisted tabs down to give clearance for part number 20 and 21 to sit properly. When bending over longer parts, try to use the long nose pliers if possible. If not, then go back and forth along the fold and bend a little at a time, otherwise the parts may warp. Be sure to hold number 23 near the tip where the fold is. I did not on my first one and it went all out of shape. There are a lot of long folds along the wings. Take your time and be patient. I bent the flap on the wing for the gun in slightly. I wanted to start the bend, but leave room to twist the tabs on the gun when I attached it. I often use my fingernails to bend over tabs. In this video, I cut out some parts where I tried numerous times to get a part to fit or had to make multiple adjustments to something to allow it to fit. I try to show a little bit of everything, but sometimes you may see in a video that I make one or two adjustments, when in reality, I made many more. I do that to move the build along. These builds take time. Be patient, take your time, and be prepared to make numerous test fits and adjustments during this or any build. Here we are, Kylo Ren's shuttle. It turned out very nicely. This went quicker than I expected. I was quite surprised to see just one instruction sheet 
and it did make for a simpler kit. A good part of it are these flat parts. There are small parts to fold and shape and bend, but not as much as, say, the snow speeder, which I did before. This was a lot of fun. Um, turned out great. I think I'm getting a little better at the round, shaping the round and cone shapes. Keep in mind, I'm not an expert model maker. I don't have the steadiest of hands. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, there's certainly people out there that can do these kits with better quality of detail than I can, but I'm not here doing these videos to show off. I'm doing these because I enjoy making these kits, but also it's nice to be able to say, hey, these are some of the pitfalls. These are problems I had, and watch out for this, and here's a piece of advice as I figure it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.